passives. But cod, for instance, has the least amount. So those kind of uh, fish selections you can look at to see if there's a greater omega-3 content. We didn't look at sushi. So, we, so, so the, question, the question is, do, does sushi or shellfish make a difference? We, we didn't look at either of those. We actually looked at non-shellfish fish. So um, it's a very good question, but we didn't examine that in our study. We looked at baked or broiled non-shellfish, which in most cases was salmon, because salmon has the highest omega-3 fatty acid content. And again, we're looking at the same tables with the number of subjects. We have 263 individuals we looked at. 163 of them ate fish on a weekly basis, which is very good in our population, and 97 didn't. And again, we're just showing another view from the video um, of these green and yellow areas of the brain. These are areas of the brain that have greater volume with weekly fish consumption. So once a week, we didn't look at daily fish consumption because we didn't have enough people in the study who ate fish on a daily basis. So only in once a week do you have to eat fish to get a positive effect on your brain. And it also improved memory power as well. So eating fish improved working memory. Working memory is the type of memory you use to memorize a phone number in a short time period or plan out certain events or engage in these different executive functions that the frontal lobe is responsible for. And this memory function improved the most in individuals who ate fish. And this increase in memory power was tied to an increase in our frontal lobes, which, as I showed you on the last slide in those arrows there, get the most effect from eating fish. So I've talked about three lifestyle factors, obesity, physical activity, and dietary fish consumption. Obesity is clearly detrimental for the brain. It shrinks the brain, and it gives your brain an Alzheimer's-type atrophy pattern. And that's what we don't want to see, because we don't want to increase risk for Alzheimer's disease. We want the best brain for as long as possible. So how do we obtain that? We obtain that by physical activity, which protects the brain and lowers the risk for Alzheimer's disease. And we can also see it by intake of baked or broiled fish, which also lowers Alzheimer's risk by protecting those same key brain areas as well. And these are things we all have under our control. What we eat, how we stay physically active, and how we put all of these activities together gives us a better brain, and in so doing, lowers the risk for Alzheimer's disease. I didn't do this alone. I had a lot of great mentors along the way from the University of Pittsburgh and UCLA. This research was funded by the National Institutes of Health, the American Heart Association, and the Radiological Society of North America. And I'm going to end with the UCLA logo, which it uh, says, it begins with you. Stay here. Let's, let's answer questions. Uh, so you've had quite a full morning. Um, what, what questions do you have? Michael? Um, omega is um, the herb that you were talking about with salmon and, and other fish. So if you take the omega supplement on a daily basis, is that a replacement um, for, for fish? Do you get the same effect? That, that's, that's a, so, that's so a, the question is, if you don't like fish mm -hmm. and you take fish oil, mm -hmm. does it count just as much? It's a tricky question because you need to have supplements that actually give you the omega-3s you need. A lot of these supplements that you see sold out there might not actually have the omega-3 content. It's been estimated by a study from Consumer Reports that came out two years ago that only 35% of the advertised fish oil supplements give you the actual omega-3s you need. So you need to really get them from uh, an individual who uh, is very rigorous about making sure that they have the omega-3s in them. So pick the right supplements. And of course, Daniel has a lot of information about the right supplements you can select from, and he can guide you there. In terms of whether or not it has a big effect on the brain, 
there have been other studies published looking at supplements that replicate the results that I looked at in my study, but I myself didn't look at supplements in the work that I've done because we're looking at individuals who entered the study in the late 80s, and so at that time, fish oil supplements weren't as popular or available as they were now, so you couldn't really study that question in larger numbers. So rather, what we then did was look at their actual you know, food consumption and their food choices, and that's how we got that information. But it's an important question, and it's, I, I would say that if you don't like fish and you can find a fish oil supplement that gives you the actual omega-3s you need, you should take it. You know, I recommend everybody take an omega-3 supplement. When you look at, one of the things we do is we often will measure your omega-6 to omega-3 ratio. And that number for you to be healthy should be under 3. And um, so omega-6 to omega-3. And the things that are omega-6 come from are corn and soy. Um, things that are pro-inflammatory. A lot of you think corn is good or soy is good. And not in high quantities. They are absolutely not good because they are pro-inflammatory. They're actually called fall fats because they store, so they make you store fat. And in the fall, you're closer to being dead. Omega-3 fatty acids are called spring fats because they give you energy and can help increase your metabolism. So think omega-3 fatty acids like in salmon or um, lamb, um, avocados are filled with omega-3 fatty acids. And so we'll often measure your ratio. And it's horrifying. Mm -hmm. uh, my niece, who I adore, who was pregnant at the time, had a ratio of 42. And that's a disaster for your health when you have such um, higher levels of omega-6 fatty acids than omega-3 fatty acids. Now, I've been taking our fish oil for, I don't know, 10 years now. It, it is made by a wonderful company called Marine Nutraceuticals that actually filter each batch for 256 toxins. So, so I might argue that taking fish oil may, in fact, be a little bit safer than eating fish every day. But Whenever they do the big studies comparing supplements versus food, food almost always wins because it's not just the oil that you're getting. You're getting a lot of other good things. So I think take fish oil every day because that will really help get your ratio under control. Mine's 1.6. Um, and our research director, when she came, it wasn't that good, and now it's great. Do that. But then, you know, the sign of intelligent life, is taking a study like the one Cyrus did and go, I'm having fish once a week. And I'm not having fried fish. Did you look at fried fish? Uh, we did. And it, it didn't help the brain at all. Uh, that, <laughs> not surprisingly. Yeah. So the filet of fish sandwich, which, you know, being Roman Catholic growing up, we could have that on Friday, uh, <laughs> doesn't count. Something I also wanted to share is that the individuals in our study who were obese had equal benefit from the lifestyle factors of being physically active and eating fish. So even if they were obese, they could still benefit from walking and eating fish once a week. Did, did you, you haven't, well, I don't know. Have you looked yet if people lose the weight? Do they get the brain tissue back? We didn't look at that in our study because there was no intervention to get them to lose weight. We were just watching them over time and seeing how they did. And so uh, you know, we can look at differences in weight over time. The problem is when people get older and they get Alzheimer's disease, they lose weight because they forget to eat. And so it's kind of hard to study that in this population. But I know there are other studies out there working on that question right so now. So I reviewed an article for the um, American Journal of Clinical Nutrition with that question. And it was a functional imaging study, and they, in fact, showed increases in activity after weight loss. So those of you that are feeling bad about yourselves, obviously, I want you to feel bad so it motivates you to do something. I don't want you to feel bad, and then you go 
to In-N-Out Burger afterwards. Um, my, my sense from reading that article and the work that we've done. Um, so for example, in our NFL study, we had a number of players that were morbidly obese. And when we did their follow-up scans after they lost one guy 110 pounds, another guy 220 pounds, their brains looked much healthier. But you want to have brain envy. I mean, you, you seriously want to go, I don't have any time to play with this. So when someone's putting you know, that extra order of, of fries in your face, or wanting to fill up your wine glass again, it's like, no, I like myself. Right? I mean, before I asked you how many of you wanted to live to 85 or beyond, and most of you raised your hand, I wanted to ask you if the rest of you were suicidal. <laughs> because if you are not suicidal, if you love your life, you love your children, you love your spouse, you have meaning and purpose, what is the matter with you? you know? Now, for me, it took me years to get to this place. Like, I'm doing whatever I can to protect my health. To do anything less is really a sign of low self-esteem. So it, does, it just doesn't happen. But I'm trying to figure out ways always to help my patients and the people who read my stuff. Like, how can I help you get there faster? And Cyrus's work, it was like immediately for me. Dinosaur syndrome? I don't think so. Right? But Well, we looked at uh, Caucasian, African American, uh, Asian, and or Pacific Islander. And those were the three biggest components that we had in our study uh, in terms of a race. Uh, there's a category of other that people could check off to, but we maybe had only one or two of those uh, in the whole cohort. So that's the, that's the breakdown of the. So we have some web questions. That's that. Uh, that's a wonderful question. We have uh, the, the majority of these studies were done using a cohort in Pittsburgh. We have subjects from uh, Wake Forest University. We have subjects from uh, the Johns Hopkins area in Baltimore. We have a site in Sacramento, but when uh,